Hey, there you are. <laughs> How you doing? Boy, it's actually good to see you. You come on in here and take a load off. We just sit in that old rocking chair over there. And stoke up that far. And I'll tell us an old story. You know, a long time ago here in the hills of Tennessee, there's a man named Cecil Weller. Lived way back in these old mountains. Some people thought he was a little odd. And, uh, others thought he was strange, but one thing they all agreed on, they was all scared of him. It was said that if you passed him on the path and got too close, you'd have nightmares. And one time a man got mad and yelled at him at the store. The old Cecil opened the door and walked through and still letting the man's wife go in first. Well, as they walked home, the man took an earache and kept it from out near the week. When his wife could do nothing else to ease his pain, she wrote a letter to Mr. Weller saying how sorry they was for her husband being mean and saying nasty things. Well, I said she left a letter at the store. The very day Mr. Weller got that letter, the earache stopped. Well, needless to say that people started to respect old Cecil a lot more. Well, almost everybody. See, there's these four young'uns. Like to run around together. About four of them. And their ages run from 15 to around 18. And when they got together, Lord, it weren't never a good sign. They got into everything. Said they'd open gates so that People's cows could get out and wander off, throw dirt and mud on the on the clothes and stuff on uh, drying on the clothes lines and things like that. Well, that's how it started out, but then it slowly got worse. And they started doing things to people's chickens and cats, small dogs and. They'd chop the old trees to fall across the road so the wagons couldn't get through. Said so they'd take salt, used for curing meat, and pour it down into people's wells, forcing them to have to carry water from springs and creeks and stuff. Everybody knowed who it was doing this, said, but nobody had any proof. Said so they knew better than to let anybody see them. I said, uh, Eli Sims was the oldest of the boys. And he was their, their leader like. And said one day he heard his mama talking to two neighbor ladies about old Cecil Weller. And how they, they was going on about how all of them was, you know, was kind of scared of him. He couldn't believe his ears when he heard his own mama say, we need to pray to the good Lord every night. And count our youngins every night before we close our eyes. He couldn't help but thinking, why was they so afraid of that old man? Now, all that talk about him was just that, just talk, nothing more. Said the more he thought about it, the matter he got. I well, said that night after the rest of the family went to bed, he slipped out of the window and run down the creek where the other boys was there waiting for him. See, he said, listen here, fellas. Something's got to be done about this old-timer. If one of our paws is too scared to do something, then I reckon it's up to us. Well, Eli's buddy Walter spit between his bare feet and looked up at Eli and said, I'll just tell you, I didn't care when we stole old man Jimson's apples. And shoot, I thought it was funny when we turned over Aunt Betsy's old outhouse. We go out and hurt old man Weller, and my pa finds out she he'll skin me alive. Lord, he'll tan my hide. Lord, everybody knows back in whenever we done something wrong, 
Lord, we wouldn't be able to sit down for a month of Sundays. Well, after listening, the other two boys agreed with Walter. Said, Eli, it ain't, you know, it ain't worth getting a tar beat out of us. Said Frank, said, yeah, but it ain't, it ain't no sense in that. Eli was mad as an old wet hen. But he knew there weren't no use in trying to talk him into doing anything to old Cecil. Yeah, all at once, he thought of something. Maybe you boys are right. Maybe we ought not to hurt him or anything like that, but maybe we ought to just scare him real good. Give him a dose of his own medicine, like. So, so one of his buddies, Johnny, looked, you know, he kind of dreadful, said, I don't know, Eli, folks say he's a witch. You believe it? You just crazy. They said, they say, I don't know, they say he can make a bird fly backwards. You never seen nothing like that. Have you? They said they sat there and stayed about it a while and talked about it and said, No, I don't know. Said, I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't want no part no part of that. Said, well, we lied to him. Said, well, come on, let's, 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 we'll do that. We'll just scare him. We won't hurt him. Well, they took off through the woods, old Cecil's cabin. See, before they got there, they blowed out the one lantern that they had. And they filled their pockets full of rocks. They slipped through the darkness and went in different directions. That way they seemed like there was a whole mess of them. Well, I so said they hid behind the rocks and trees and stumps and things like that. The old cabin was dark. And so after a few minutes, they started throwing rocks as hard as they could. So they throw them at the roof and the walls and everything. Then Eli heard a thud and it hit wood. He leaned out behind the tree, but before he could throw another rock, one whizzed by his head. So he leaned out again, just as another flew by his head, barely missing his ear. He even felt it brush his hair. He said about that time he heard the other boys are running for dear life. He followed them. And he barely stopped long enough to get his lantern. Well, then when they did, I reckon they run through the woods a while and then stopped catch their breath a spell. And said he pointed his finger at the other boy and said, Which one of the youngsters are throwing rocks at me? I said, what? I said, Frank Tony said, I, I thought you was throwing them at me. I said, all of them got quiet for a minute. So Walter shook his head. I said, it was dark and we all got confused at which way we was throwing them is all that was. I said, ah. I said, that don't make no sense. I said, the cabin was right there in front of us. Said, well, Walter, he was getting a little fed up with Eli and said, well, Why don't you just explain it there, Mr. Smarty Britches, since you're so smart? But the problem was he couldn't. So instead, he said, well, We better get on home before any of us gets in trouble. I reckon said Eli I climbed back through his window, waking up his younger brothers. And he laid down in his bed and asleep for it to even turn over. Next thing you know, said he was opening his eyes. And Pa leaned over the bed and gave him a good shake. Said, wake up, boy. Cow's got to be milk. And, you, know, you slept right through the roosters are crowing. So he raised up on his elbows and said, I'm up, Pa. I'm up. So his Pa walked away. He said, see what you do now. Your mom is already starting breakfast. And she'll be needing some milk. Said Eli, sat up on the side of the bed for a minute and rubbed his eyes and stood up. So as soon as he did, red hot pain shot through his feet and all the way up his legs. So Lord, he screamed out bloody murder and fell to the floor. So his mom and pa come running in there and he told him he couldn't stand up because his feet was hurting so bad. 
There's blood all over the floor, and his pa picked him up, laid him on the bed. So his mama turned pale, just pale white. She looked down at his feet, and she turned her to his brother, Charlie. She said, Charlie, you go to the well and get me a bucket full of clean water. And hollered at her daughter, yeah, and there and tear me up some cloth. You know. So hurry up now. Said Pa looked closer at his feet and said, Son, what in the world have you done to your feet? Said, I don't know, Pa. Said, didn't even hurt till I stood up, put my weight on him. But it sure hurts. Said, I can see why. It looks like you've put him in a pot of boiling water. Said Eli moaned and his pa turned said, Don't you worry, Ma, I'll have you fixed up in no time. Well, I said a few days went by, and his feet still showed no signs of healing. It's still just as bad as it was the first day. His mama was a-washing him when his pa come into the room. She looked up and said, I'll get you dinner on the table in just a minute. He shook his head and said, I don't worry about that. I, said, I just come from Will's house, and Walter's feet is just like Eli's. And so's Johnny's and Frank's. So Ma put her hands over her heart. Said, oh, my Lord, what do you think it is? Said, so I said, don't, don't sound like this is any of the Lord's work. Said, wrap him up in a blanket. I'll be back in a minute. And she said she was kind of confused. Said, Where are you taking him? So he looked down at his wife and said, you gonna be all right. I'll take care of it. Don't you worry none. See, so he took old Eli and wrapped him up in a blanket. Got the old wagon and put some straw in it. And there toward the back of the wagon there, so he had some crates. They had some chickens and stuff like that. Said so he asked his pa, I said, what, you know, so what are you doing with Ma's good laying hands? He said, for payment. So, so I don't understand. Why for, Pa? See, Pa told him, never you mind now. Just turn around and hush. I said, he lay back down there and kindly dozed off. So the next thing you know, said, he woke up. Said, when he come to, said, there was Walter, Johnny, and Frank beside of him. Said, then there's more crates. One of them had a little pig in it. One of them had a bushel basket full of jars, canned beans, and stuff like that, jellies, and jams. You know, things like that. So they turned around and looked. And Frank's daddy was sitting beside his pa. The other man rode behind him on the horses. Well, that's the next thing you know, it was dark. So you, you hear the horses snorting and things like that. Didn't know where in the world he was going. Well, I said after a few minutes, they come to a stop. So they in front of this old house. The really old house. Said Eli set up to get a better look at it. Said the dim light come through that window and the front door open. Said the light come out on the porch and uh, said he's an old woman she stood in the doorway. Said Eli's pa walked across the porch after a minute and he come back. So they carried the boys into that old house. Lay down on a rug and sat in front of the fireplace where a small fire was burning. So the old lady walked over there and on her cane. So she looked at her feet. So she eased over there to her rocking chair and slowly sat down. So she sat back and commenced to rocking in her chair there and looked over at them. She said, you boys got something you want to tell me? She said they just looked at each other but wouldn't say nary a word. Well, she said, you know, might as well told them back out there in the wagon. So his pa stepped up there and said, Ain't Vita, you said, before she could say, before he could say anything else, said she just held up her hand. I said, Don't you say it's me now. I said, I don't care how old you are, so I'll still take you across my knee and whoop your hind in. I can't help nobody that don't want to help herself. Can't help nobody that won't tell me what they've done. I said, She hit her, took her old cane there and hit the floor with it. and said, It almost seemed to echo. So Frank kind of looked down and everything. So he said, we didn't mean to go there to hurt him or anything. 
He looked up to a woman and said, he was almost close to tears, said, we just wanted to scare him like, like he scared our folks. And when the old woman spoke, it was just was a little bit nicer at the time. Said, sometimes being scared is a good thing. Keeps you from doing foolish things. To Eli's pa said, Old Matt door let old Jake in. I said he did. He rushed over and unhinged the door and opened it up. Said, Big old black dog he eased into the room and lay down by the, by her rocking chair. I said that old woman smiled, that old dog rubbed him behind the ears and everything. She said, Why don't you tell me how you scared him? And Johnny sitting there and he said, oh, we just, we chucked rocks at his house. Said, but then he chucked them right back. Walker spoke up. You don't know that. It was dark. And they said, old Frank turned to Walker. See, it was dark. and All we could see was the house, and that's what we throwed at. But he couldn't see us. Said, she said, hush up now. That don't matter. So she told him, said, now, she looked at him real close and said, what might you have left there when you left? What would you have left behind? So he said, oh, nothing, ma'am, nothing. So we didn't leave nary a thing. She said, you sure? I said, yes, ma'am. We didn't leave nary a thing, nothing. So she looked at him, took her old cane there and kind of tapped his leg and said, well, your feet tells a different story. Says she told him, see, you left your footprints behind, boys. It didn't take him long to find them either. Says she got up and walked to the door. Said, you men folk bring him baskets and boxes and things to the porch and then take him chickens and that pig and stuff out to the barn. Said, I want to talk to these boys. Says she closed the door behind them. And said the men folk did as they told. Went back to the house, and that old big black dog was laying in front of the door. So they couldn't get by him. And no matter what they did, they could not get by that dog. So they said they turned around and started, you know, carrying wood to the porch, and busting up wood, and taking fresh water to the mules and the horses and things. And well, I said after a little while, the door opened, that old woman made her way out. And she handed each one of them a salve wrapped in the butcher's paper. I said, now, you take them boys home and take a clean rag, damp, with the morning dew. And you clean their feet with it. And use this salve. Said, and you do it for the next four mornings. And you got to do it for sunrise now. I said, they should be all right. I said, the one of the men looked there and said, you sure they're going to be all right? She said, as far as I know, as long as they decide to leave him be. Said, they told him, said, well, you reckon that old fella will leave these boys alone? Said, she said, I reckon he'll leave them, he'll leave them alone, give them a chance, as long as they've learned their lesson. And she said, I hope they did, because <laughs> he may not give them another. See, he ain't, see, he ain't no stronger than me, said, but he is younger. On down the road, if them boys don't heed my warning. So she just shook her head. So I might not be around to help them. So she looked up at the sky and said, by that time the sun was coming up over the mountains. She said, looks like it's going to be a long day ahead. So you just take them boys home, get some rest, and get some rest themselves. So she walked off. And so... Sam looked down and said, old big black dog was looking him straight in the eye for a minute. So he thought, Lord, now nah, I'm just hard and everything. Said, but said, it seemed like that dog was almost staring into his soul. Said, old dog followed that old woman back. And said, she told him, said, said, yeah, that old dog is old as I am. Said, but he knows as much as I do and winked and said, maybe more. Well, they said days turned into weeks, and then months turned into years, and so after that, said, Jake took his only son, Frank, and his wife and daughters, and moved away from the mountains. And then for less than a year, you know, 
Walter's daddy and took his family and done the same thing. So Eli, Walter, and Frank, said they'd see each other from time to time. Long, far in between, but said one time, said their friend Johnny passed away, and they saw each other then at his funeral. Said from time to time they'd write letters to one another and send a Christmas card and birthday cards and things like that, but then after years that went on and stuff, said even them started to stop. Said Eli never blamed his friends. Said he know they just grown up and growed apart. They reckon they said oh Eli married a young woman and gave him six youngins. Said Eli said he'd wind up so he'd tell his story to all his kids and then again to his grandkids. So they all wanted to see the scars on his feet. And they always asked him the same question. What did Aunt Vita talk to you about that night? And said, oh, Eli, said he'd just smile and say, well, if you're real good, you'll never know. But if you're real bad, then she'll come back and tell you herself. I well, said they'd beg and beg. He said, no, no. Said, that's, that's enough now. He said, so Eli was doing that one evening. Again, one of his grandkids is a, begging him to tell that story. He said, no, no, no. It's not tonight, not tonight. It's time for bed. So he put his youngest to bed and went over there and unlatched the door and opened it up. He said, the old black dog walked in and sat down beside of him. He said, his grandbaby looked at him. He said, that dog's almost as old as you are, Pa. Said he grinned, rubbed that old dog behind the ear, and said, maybe. Said, but I ain't nowhere near as smart as he is. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this old story. I sure do appreciate you coming back and seeing me. It's mighty good to see you, mighty good. Each and every one of you's kin folk. If you're new, please subscribe. If you'd like to, hit that like button for me and share it out. Tell all your friends and family. I sure appreciate you. Well, I love each and every one of them from the bottom of my heart. God bless you and your kin. Have a good one.